Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Raka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and others of Great Millstone who definitely rule well, who have taught us his truth. And honors and salutations to the elect Akim doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So, this, this, this is most likely going to be a quick lesson, man. I just want to get into how I was watching the news. And, you know, I see these, you know, these very um, demonic women from the, uh, you know, my you-know-what, my choice movement. They're still protesting. They're still acting a fool. And it's, it's like they was out there and they were... Uh, 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 marching and they were doing like a little like a little uh, docu-series type of thing and you know their their faces are looking like all oh, they're serious you know they're you know they're really about it okay and stuff like that well you know I got the scriptures to cut that whole um pretty much yeah my body my choice because in actuality it's not your body it's really not your body, man. Okay? It's not it's not your body, your choice. That body that you have belongs to the Lord. Okay? Now before I even get this, let me get let me search another scripture before I even get that. Alright? Let's see what the whole let's see what the whole duty is of being put on this planet Earth. Is the first thing about being on this planet earth is the first purpose of being on planet earth to make as much money as possible is that the purpose of being on earth going to school getting a career making six figures the book of proverbs chapter man i'm all over the place with it now salaki the book of proverbs chapter third setting up one for the other uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verses 4. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So here in America, they teach you, you know, life is all about going to school, getting your education, going to college, finding your career, making your money, having a family, this and that. But then, but why does it say here that riches profit not in the day of wrath? Because that's not the number one purpose of being on this planet. Okay? Yes, that is a purpose. But it's not the number one purpose. Because the scriptures say, In the sweat, in the sweat of thy eyes shalt thou eat thy bread. So you have to work. You have to get money to, uh, 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 to get by. The scriptures even say money is a defense. So, yes, you do have to get, but that's not the number one purpose, man. The number one purpose, is, let's get into it. The number one purpose is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay, man and woman. All right, let's get in. Let's look up this word duty real quick. The whole duty it says duty is work that you have to do for your job. Number two, your duty. Oh, that's just a plural. Number three, if you say that something is your duty, you believe that you ought to do it because it is your responsibility. All right. So this we we better do it because it's responsibilities. Like they say, like like when you a kid, they say, yo, if you don't clean your room, then you're not spending the night at your friend house. So now it has become your duty, your responsibility to clean your room. All right? So now that's our duty. It is our duty. The Lord's telling us, if you want to enter into this pleasures evermore, if you want to enter into the kingdom, you better fear the most high. And you better keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why we have been put here. 
Okay? So now, with that being said, that defeats the purpose of do as thou wilt. We're not here to do as thou wilt. So that already scratches out, you know, your body, your choice. Right? So going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? Now, Salaka, Salaka, I wanted to just get some other versions real quick. The same scripture, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, from the English Standard Version, says, Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in you? See that? New King James Version. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? So, your body... All right, so Khan, your body is actually the most highest temple. Your body is act actually belongs to the most high. Rightfully so. Is that so shocking to believe? Didn't he create you? Didn't he create us? Okay, from the ground. Didn't he create us from the ground? So if I create something, you, you, you put something on it that's called a patent. And the patent protects, uh, uh, protects you in your creation from anybody stealing it. Why? Because it's your, you the one that came up with that. Ultimately through the spirit of the Lord. So now nobody can come and say, oh, look what I created. You can then sue him. If that's your creation of what you created. Because that's what, that, that belongs to you. So the Most High, he created us from the ground. All right. So therefore, we belong to him. Which is why it says in 1 Corinthians 3 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. Okay? So therefore, with your body belonging to the Most High, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. So if you get a A to the B to the O, alright? The A to the abortion if you get that you are defiling yourself you're spreading your you spreading your legs open man and i think i don't know the exact procedures right but from what i've seen briefly they stick a, a, a damn suction device right right in you okay which is automatic defilation the only thing that's supposed to go Inside of a inside of a woman is her husband's rod. Okay, you sticking anything foreign, strange, metal. That's automatic defilation. So they stick this dim, uh, vacuuming type suction type mechanism right in there, and they and they suck it out. You know, they suck it out. Oh, oh however the fuck. That's one option they do. I think it's. Other, uh, other options or whatever, man. So that's automatically defiling the temple. If you cut your, if you, if you so upset that you, that you cut yourself, you defiling your temple. If you, if you smoking weed, you defiling your temple. Okay. Even, even tattoos. Even tattoos. Is defiling your temple. But see, a lot of us got tattoos when we was in the world, though. And then we repented. So it says, If any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? Even being a mo. If you take your rod and put it in strange flesh, you, 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 you officially defiled your temple. Right? Let's read on. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. So if you say anything contrary to the Scriptures, if you're not backing up what you're saying with the Scriptures, 
Oh, but what about this? But what about you think that you're making a good point? That's foolishness in the eyes of the Lord, man. Okay? And not to mention the scriptures also say, be fruitful and multiply. Alright, so how how the Lord going to tell you be fruitful and multiply, but you out here often the seed that's within you. Prevent that's prevention of being fruitful and multiplying, man. So I don't know the exact number, I'll be honest, of uh, how many babies are off a year. But let's say uh, 10 million. And that's and that's worth a Google search. You know, which I'll do I'll do myself after this lesson. Let's say 10 million babies are off a year due to the aid to the abortion. Right? That is going against what the Lord said when he said be fruitful and multiply. So you're already so you're already going off. So now one, you're not obeying what the Lord said, and now two, you're defiling your temple. Let me get an, uh, another scripture. First Timothy chapter five verses fourteen it says, "I will therefore that the younger woman marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully." See that? So the apostle Paul and the scriptures say that all scripture is given as inspiration of the Most High. You know, meaning all these scriptures and what's being said really comes from the Lord. So really, the Lord wants you to marry and bear children right so that's an order man that's an order let me see if there were for therefore yeah the, the greek word for therefore i can't pronounce that so lucky oof i believe but it says then therefore accordingly consequently these things being so certainly accordingly all right truly so if it's certainly then you should that's what you should do and he's saying bear children so you're supposed to bear children not not off them so if i say look i got this guy that yo go he owes me money go over there and pick up pick up the money from him and bring it back to me right and then you go pick up the money and rip it in half how do you think I will feel about how you think the next man gonna feel about that. So it's the same thing in the scripture. If the Lord is telling you to build children, but here it is, you got the child and then you off it. It's like yo, what the? Are you yo? You, that's disrespect. So you know you can continue to say, you know, your body, your choice, but you also continue to know that the Lord is very displeased with that. And that the Lord will and soon gonna visit for that. And, ju and, and judgment will be set down for that. So Lord, well, this was edified with that, I'm gonna say shallow.